So, I was inspired by that last 40k video that Sodaz made before he deleted his channel. The one that featured the death core of Krieg, and it had that epic cavalry charge. No idea if they are any good on the tabletop, but I just really like the look of them, and want to print and paint a unit of this cavalry. Rule of Cool style. And speaking of rule of cool, cavalry charges are just, well, epic. No matter the weapons, no matter the time period, no matter the situation, no matter the outcome. Sometimes you are crushing your foes in a surprise lightning strike. Sometimes you and your mates have tooled up and polished to perfection to ride forth to save the land from the sun you were tricked into spawning with your half-sister sorceress with a penchant for armoured lingerie. Or that final desperate act, the heroic last stand as you ride against the modern world that is trying to brush away your traditions with a little help from an American who has come to love what your countrymen are here to destroy. Or just exploring the practicalities. The Valorcore cavalry are good. I especially like that they have swords as backups, but the Station Forge ones were a bit more dynamic in pose and the muscles of the horses are a bit more defined. So I printed a bunch of the cavalry and the captain as well. First up, after gluing them together, I dropped them in my hiking boot box and gave them a layer of Citadel Primer Chaos Black. On to painting the steeds. Why am I painting them this colour? Jerry, my rods and cones are all screwed up! <laughs> nope, that's not it. There's an actual reason for this. Allow me to explain. The Death Rider steeds are the product of extreme genetic engineering. And this phrase made me think of another form of extreme genetic engineering I read about in Rogue Trooper in 2000 AD. The GIs, or genetic infantrymen, were engineered to be immune to poison and could breathe the lethal atmosphere of New Earth. I was a huge fan of this strip, even going so far as spray painting one of my action men blue. Anyways, the series got a reboot years later, which also gave them suspended animation abilities, enhanced strength and healing, standard super soldier creation stuff that, you know, Space Marine creation dialed up to 11. The numbers all go to 11. Look, right across the board. Oh. 11, oh, 11, and most of 11, and then... Amps go up to 10. Exactly. Anyways, so when I think of extreme genetic engineering, I think blue. So this is my chosen colour scheme for the steeds. Plus, because these models don't have those mutant clawed feet, I'm showing the effects of the dabbling with their DNA this way. After painting everything with a layer of Abaddon Black, a layer of McCrag Blue for the skin of the horses. Actually, <laughs> I wonder if the Krieg themselves are actually genetically engineered as well. I've seen that they may be cloned. Maybe I should do those jungle warriors the same. If Katajans become something I want to field, I can keep my Krieg style and make these my proxy for them. And then breaking out the Thunderhawk blue. A dip of my dry brush and then a light application across the rider and the saddle, catching the wrinkles in the fabric of the uniform, the straps of the saddle, the reins and the saddlebags and other containers, and the cap of the captain. Then Dawnstone a lighter touch on all the same areas, creating a more subtle accent. Back to the horse. A layer of Nuln oil all over the blue skin, making sure to get a decent application on where the saddle meets the steed. I left it to dry upside down to make sure the Nuln oil pulls there to create a nice shadow. Once the Nuln oil was dry, breaking out the Imric blue dry and dry brushing across the horse to catch the muscles and the hooves. Loading up the brush, rather than wipe the excess off on my thumb, I merely painted it on the hooves to get a good solid shade. And this gets the brush into perfect condition to swipe across the rest of the physique. Next up, Ethereum Blue Dry to do the same. I painted it on the hoof tips and then dry brushed lightly across the rest of the steed, catching the ears and the mane and up the legs with some extra touches to the flanks and shoulders. Then, Iron Hand Steel, 
a dry brush to the armour, the helmet, the lance and the guns, and the gas mask of the steed and the rider, and of course the armoured plates of the captain's horse. Corn red for the pauldrons and epaulots on the captain, and the flags on the lances. Then Caraburg crimson, the nice watery shade that really makes the areas of red pop after it's painted generously across all that corn red. Now for the tails, a light dry brush of macrag blue to accent all the flowing contours. For the captain's horse, corn red and the Caraburg crimson. I've been using the red as a sign of command. For the ball green and the officers, red helms. And for the Death Rider captain, they've either engineered this colour or just dye it to make the steed more discernible as a mount for a commander. And then a very delicate dry brush of Astro Wrath red to the flags, epaulots, pauldrons and the towel to add a nice hint of brighter colour. On to the base. A squirt of Elmer's glue moved around across the base with a brush and then a sprinkle of red rock sand over this and leave it to dry completely. Any patches that were a little thin, a second application of glue and more sand. And then Cadian Flesh Tone, a dry brush to the hooves and up the legs a little and a very brief touch to the toes of the rider's boots. I played with adding my regiment symbol to the steeds as a brand or tattoo transfer, but it just didn't look right. If I can find a way to make it work, I'll add them later and make a video then. A few army painter swamp tufts for my dying desert grasses, and then back to the box for a blast of Kamar matte varnish from every angle to lock down the sand and protect the paint job. So here we are, my squadron of Krieg Death Riders. Rider and Steed are both protected by the ubiquitous respirators of the Death Corps. The genetically engineered Steeds carry the infamous guard into the thick of battle, where the shaped charge tip of the Death Rider hunting lance blasts through armour and flesh to create a devastating initial charge. Battlefield reconnaissance, shock troops, reserves to break counterattacks or to punch through enemy lines. The Death Riders are chosen for their initiative and ability to operate independently, resulting in many Death Corps officers having been former Death Rider troops. 